Welcome to our community. Susie Thomas with you this morning, visiting with Maria Hagee, who is president and CEO of the United Way of... Greater Stark County. Greater Stark County. Well, let's start there, uh, Maria, that uh, there was a merger, and let's talk about that a little bit. Who is United Way now? United Way of Greater Stark County represents um, Maslin, Alliance, Canton, as far up as Lake Township, Hartville area, and down into the Minerva and part of Carroll County area. So a lot of folks, and this brought um, more people working together, but in different ways. I know that um, when I think of United Way, let's start there. I think of a lot of people giving what they can, pulling it all together, and that we can do so much more when you pull it all together rather than depending on a few large gifts. A lot of little gifts means a lot, doesn't it? It means an absolute huge amount to this community. You know, the United Way movement in Stark County is about 94 years old. Um, It started here in Stark County um, by the Belden and Timken family, which is always very exciting that families who have continued to be so gracious to the community really were what brought the United Way movement here. Across the country, United Mm -hmm. Way's are um, celebrating over 150 years of service, and it started doing exactly what you just talked about. Um, In Denver, a woman and a priest and a rabbi um, and a minister came together to say, there's got to be a better way to do service. Hmm. And instead of working in silos, how can we collectively, as a community, come together to meet needs? Because all of us bring something. And it really is relative. Sometimes it's volunteer work. Sometimes it's a $1 donation, a $5 donation, a $10,000 donation. Every single bit really, truly makes a a difference in this community. And we also think of the different agencies that sometimes everyone has their pet project Mm -hmm. and uh, a philanthropy or an agency that means a lot to them. There is a way to make sure that their gift goes directly to the work of that organization, or there has been, um, and that it's not just when we give our dollars that those are dispersed among all of them. How does that work exactly? Sure, great question. Currently, United Way funds 96 programs at 38 partner agencies, Hmm. and those agencies might be um, the WISE, the the Scouts, health clinics, a variety of different agencies. And so when we run the campaign, um, the dollars collected, we always say give to the community fund the best way to help the most people, and those are the dollars that our allocation volunteers distribute in the areas of education, income, and health. Or, to your point, if a donor has some area that they're really passionate about, maybe they grew up with that agency, Mm -hmm. maybe that agency taught them to swim, whatever, Um, they just need to mark on their pledge card that they'd like their dollar to go to that agency. And as a matter of fact, it does not have to be an agency receiving United Way dollars. They just need to be a 501c3 in good standing. And uh, we take care of all the behind the scenes checks and balances to make sure that the dollars are being used the way the donor wants them to be. Let's go to that allocation committee. I cannot imagine uh, the sense of responsibility that they must feel as they're making those kinds of decisions. You want to touch on that a bit? Sure. It starts, um, we have what we call our leadership committee. And Judge Mike Howard uh, chairs that committee. And Kevin Smith from PPI Graphics uh, is the vice chair of the committee. And that committee is comprised of individuals representing the chair and vice chair of the three building block areas where we fund, as well as some community representation. Now, if you drill down a little bit, again, we, we fund, as I mentioned earlier, in the areas of education, income, and health. So the education building block, all the programs that are applying in the area of education, um, that group of volunteers reviews and hears the presentations. The same thing happens in the financial block, the income block, same thing happens in the health block. The volunteers sitting around the table are experts in those areas. Um, They really promote collaboration, and uh, they really take Mm. their job very, very seriously. Staff are not involved in the decision-making. Our job is to make sure they have the information they need, Mm -hmm. that we get from the agency any additional questions, um, 
handouts, etc. But it is 100% volunteer driven. And they, you know, you would think every single one of those dollars came out of their own personal pocket. Mm -hmm. That's how careful they are on how donor dollars are used. And uh, they're um, right now hearing we had about 125 agencies apply. We're in the middle of allocations review right now. And we have 125 that are applying in every single program has been presented to the volunteers. They're just wrapping up now, and then they'll begin making funding decisions, and those decisions will be released to the community um, at the end of March. Very exciting. Uh, Now, I know that this has kind of undergone a bit of a transformation. I think you're reflecting um, giving today, because rather than just having money go to an agency, You are talking about, I've heard you say the word program several times. Let's talk about that. What kinds of programs and and how does that work now? Because uh, almost any 501c3 or any 501c3 can get their program or their special project funded in this way. Am I right on that? Um, somewhat. So let's talk about that. Let's, Love yeah. that question. <laughs> so um, in the areas of education, for mm-hmm. instance, and and maybe I'll start by going back to what you mentioned earlier. We used to fund program um, agencies. Yes. What we call deficit funding. So for an example, an agency might come in and say, "I my budget's two hundred thousand. I can raise one hundred and fifty thousand. I want United Way funding for fifty thousand. Mm-hmm. And you know, for years and years and years, the United Way movement worked that way. But here's what we found: you don't solve problems by just throwing money at a budget, a bottom line. You solve yeah. problems by identifying really, really good programs. Mm-hmm. Who in the community can collaborate together? Because we can't do these things in silos. And what programs do we really know are moving? the needle. And when I say moving the needle, maybe you'll see change this year, you'll see change five years from now, maybe Susie, some of these, you won't see until a whole generation has gone through. Mm -hmm. And that's what our agent, our volunteers are focusing on. So let's use education for an example. We know that children, we have all sorts of data on this, children coming, sometimes children coming from poverty, for instance, coming from a challenging household where there might be violence, there might be insecurities as far as food, um, shelter, et cetera. Those kids often enter school two to three years behind their peers. And then they spend their entire career of school trying to catch up. And if we're lucky, someone will come in and intercede, but many times that's not the case. And they may not graduate or they may make choices that really don't lead to a, a, a strong, fulfilling future. Or finish school. Absolutely. So under education, under this current allocation, our, the programs that are going to receive funding are programs that are going to make sure kids are ready to learn mm-hmm. when they enter school. We're going to fund programs that provide children the supports they need to graduate from school, from school and go on to either a higher trade of some form or higher education. That's how you start breaking the cycles. That's how you start making sure. So when I say to you, it might be years from now, the little one that came into kindergarten outscoring everyone because of a certain program experience they had, you know, 12 years from now, that child, we're hoping you will see them graduate. I may not see it, Mm -hmm. but we know great things are happening. And within each of the building blocks under income, under health. Each one of those have very specific goals that talk about how do you really start um, through collaboration changing the face of what our families and kids look like in this community. I love what you're saying about building blocks. So specifically, what are the building blocks that you are um, hanging all of this on, building all of this on? Yeah, the building blocks are education, income, and health. Uh Because again, we know if kids are ready to enter school, and they graduate from school and go on to a trade or higher education, that leads to the income building block. And the income building block, we want to make sure that people are ready to work, that there's opportunities for them, that they have budget coaching and mentoring and everything they need to to be successful. That leads to healthy. That leads to a healthy community. Mm -hmm. That leads to healthy families. But we also know um, sometimes life gets in the way. Mm -hmm. and tragedies hit, and um, we need to make sure in our health building block that 
there's there's supports there in place for um, families when that um, need comes up. Mm-hmm. We're uh, talking with Maria Hagee. She's president and CEO of United Way. Uh, I'm curious to know what some of these specific programs are. What comes to mind as just some of the highlights of it's got to be so gratifying to do what you do and to see the changes that it is making in people's lives. Talk about what's a winning program. You know, we were very fortunate in this community that we have really great funders. And Sisters of Charity Foundation years ago um, started a program called SPARK that we are very honored to also be a funder of now. And SPARK is a perfect example of what we were chatting about earlier. We have 10 years now of cohorts of of tracking children through the SPARK program. And SPARK is a very parent-involved Um, program where people go into the home and work with the parents on early development and understanding brain development and activities that you do with your kids. So the first group came into kindergarten and significantly outscored non-SPARC kids. And we saw that at third grade. And we saw that at fifth grade. Hmm. And where I, I haven't seen the eighth grade test yet. But what that's telling us is we have a program with very good data showing that kids who had the SPARK experience have outperformed kids who don't have the SPARK experience. So what I say to people is, just imagine if every child in Stark County had that opportunity. Exactly. How do we make that happen? We make that happen by um, foundations and United Way collaborating Mm -hmm. together to um, really drill, drill funding that direction. And so that's one of the programs that through the United Way campaign that's just wrapping up. Um, That's one of the programs that are applying for funding. Pretty exciting stuff. All right, we're speaking with Maria Hagee. She's president and CEO of the United Way of Greater Stark County. Uh, Talk about that merger. How how tough was that to... um, pull together, uh, you know, really different entities. People have ownership, and maybe they're a little territorial, too. So how do you do that? Walk us through how that happened. You know, we have a great community here, Um, and I've been with United Way 36 years, and so I've gotten to see all sorts of different changes and, and opportunities take place in this community. And in 2003, community leaders came together and said, You know, every day in our business, we make tough decisions on how do we do the best work we can um, and how do we streamline it and how do we make sure we're we're being budget conscious, et cetera. And shouldn't our nonprofits operate the same way? And more importantly to me, Susie, pre-merger, when we had three United Ways, there were pockets of the community that people were not receiving service Hmm. or they were not receiving um, as comprehensive a service as they might have because it, their their service depended on how much money was raised in their neighborhood or their zip code. And so the community leaders and the three United Ways worked very hard together through 2003 and in 2004 launched the United Way of Greater Stark County. What's exciting about that is I can, I can s- share with you that since that time, dollars have moved all over Stark County based on need, Mm -hmm. not based on the zip code in which you lived, and that campaign was run. And so as a result, families and neighborhoods who in the past maybe were not receiving as much service are now receiving service. And what's really exciting is to bring three very strong communities together with very different personalities and different strengths and different experiences to bring those three together to talk about what's best for our community is really what the work is all about. Mm -hmm. And so because of that, we really have seen great things happen since 2004 because now we're a community working together um, to the bigger picture. Nice. We've got to take a break here, have a few words. Uh, Thanks for joining us. We'll be back with more with Maria. You're listening to Our Community.